Hello, this is a video about COVID-19 and about transformation. Because while the pandemic has changed the world in many ways, it's also revealed something about us. What you learn here may shock you, not because it's a secret conspiracy that's been hidden from us, but because it speaks to a truth that we've forgotten. A truth we need to remember now more than ever at this point in our evolution. Certainly it's been a Groundhog Day experience. But it's given us time for reflection and a chance to look for the silver lining in all of this. And certainly we've seen some beautiful things coming out of this crisis. How people are reaching out to each other. The courage of the healthcare workers and the appreciation shown around the world as people come out on their porches and balconies to cheer and applaud and give the love back. But before we can see what other gifts this crisis might be offering, I think we need to start with an honest look at the reality of how we got here. The best information we have about how the virus started is that it came from bats sold in the wet markets of China. Now anyone who's seen a video about those markets has probably felt a sense of horror and revulsion at what we as human beings are capable of doing to the other animals on this planet. Packing species from all over the world together in terribly unsanitary conditions. Those markets are like a scene out of Dr. Moreau. But where did those markets come from? And why will humans eat anything that walks? And it's not just eating. It's how we consume this planet and the natural world. Gobbling up its resources, its food, its water, destroying its ecology, packing ever more billions on the planet while we destroy other species. We have become consuming machines living to consume products and experience. And by doing that, by raping the natural world, we have knowingly or unknowingly declared war on it. And now finally the planet is fighting back. It's treating us as the virus and what we're calling the virus are its antibodies because we've become the invasive species. We've been acting like a cancer at war with the natural world. And we've become so numb to that truth it takes a girl from Sweden with Asperger's to shout at us in the UN for us to hear it at all. But when we look at the outer pollution we're creating from a micro-macro perspective, we begin to realize these viruses didn't start in the wet markets of China, but in the wet markets of our own avarice, our quest for more pleasure, more distraction, more money, more, more, more. But why is our hunger so insatiable that will consume to the point of self-destruction as we're facing now with the planet's ecology. What hole are we trying desperately to fill by hoarding and acquiring and consuming and propagating? Pushing the Earth's population to 10 billion people by the year 2050. In his landmark book, Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl talked about a depression people felt on Sunday. When the rush of their busy week was over, and the void within themselves became manifest. The great teachers of human history have spoken about the journey of self-discovery and finding that meaning. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. And the Buddha said, our own true nature is infinite joy, always happy, peaceful, and free. He who lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the universe. Yet as a species, we are numb to our true nature as spirit and flesh, the divine on the earth. Because our contact to the divine goes through our hearts with unconditional love. Children have that unconditional love, but most of us lost that through childhood trauma, judgment and criticism. So our open path to our deeper nature is blocked by our own self-critical minds now. We've been taught to suppress ourselves, our true power and grace, to numb out, to settle for crumbs, to self-medicate with TV shows and games and physical sensations and our little interpersonal intrigues and dramas. But we are so much more than that. We are the Alpha and Omega quoted in the Bible. We are a supernova of consciousness. We are the vastness of the universe the vastness of infinity. The Hindu sage Ramana Maharshi was once asked about a twitch he had in an eye. 
and he said when an elephant walks into a tent the tent is never the same the elephant he spoke about was our divine nature as consciousness and the tent was his body and science has never been more aligned with these great teachers as the father of quantum theory physicist Niels Bohr said everything we call real is made up of things that cannot be regarded as real we are cosmic consciousness manifesting as individual life forms in order to experience itself like the separate fingers of one hand playing the piano individual yet one but in creating these bodies we've forgotten we're not just individual minds but all of consciousness in over identifying with these bodies we see ourselves as separate from each other in opposition and competition in losing contact with our divinity we chase after physical sensations and desires and goals to try and fill the whole with that vast unconditional love and connection to everything was meant to be experienced so that's the whole we're trying to fill where our knowledge of true nature belongs where our contact with that supernova of consciousness is located is it any wonder we hide in addictions trying to fill that hole we are like the hungry ghosts of Chinese legend eating but never full no matter how much we consume so these viruses are a call to sanity like the alien species in the day the earth stood still these pandemics are nature's way to turn everything off for a few moments to hit the pause button for us to reflect and step back from this path of destruction to wake up to what we are so what would a future as an awake enlightened species look like if we knew everything and everyone was an expression of our infinite selves perhaps we would be kinder fight less compete less need less if we are lit by that inner divine light perhaps we wouldn't need to consume so much to feel full perhaps we wouldn't need to have so many children to fill the void and leave a legacy if we knew that we're already immortal and could instead focus on loving the children who are already here so that is the opportunity that the virus is providing a window into our hearts and souls and a chance to wake up to wake up to wake up out of the slumber to live our deepest purpose here in this life this time this dimension and planet in this virtual reality the quantum physicists have described to do it we each have to let go of some of our fears let go of the obsessive identity of the ego of identifying ourselves as this person that we think we are our fear is that disaster will strike that without the ego will lose our ambition and caution and terrible things will happen the irony is that letting go of our physical bodies often makes us more capable of looking after them when we're over identified everything becomes life and death fight or flight as we know about people with post-traumatic stress syndrome we're too close to the pain too close to the problem it's not till we get some distance that we're able to see things from a clearer perspective the process of doing this video has shown me my fear the fear of speaking up and speaking out of not being small of living up to my true nature as consciousness the mind wants to hide believe me it doesn't want to do this it wants to be safe it wants to protect always to avoid but this is the opportunity the crisis offers us this is its clarion call it wants us to wake up we've tried to destroy nature and it's fighting back now but it hasn't fully committed to destroying us yet this virus is more lethal than the last one was and the next one will be even more lethal each time it mutates it gets more dangerous I've heard so many people ask when can we get back to normal when can we get back to the way things used to be but going back blindly to business as usual is surely the way to destruction so the planet and the virus are giving us another chance if we don't get the message and course correct then these viruses will continue to mutate till our survival is truly in peril 
Nature has given us this wake-up call because it loves us. These bodies are part of it, organisms of the natural world. We are children of the earth, but we were designed to illuminate it, not destroy it, perhaps to be its crowning achievement, that the earth gave birth to a species that knew itself as the whole cosmos, that reflected God's glory in all its radiance that love the planet and all its creatures with a transcendent love and care. That is our possibility. Can we realize that destiny? For me, I want to be part of the solution and a force for good. That's why I'm making a commitment to inner change and to helping facilitate outer change. I'm making a commitment to not going back to business as usual. Because business as usual has a very bad outcome for our species. In some following videos, I'll talk about how to get in touch with that vast love and our true nature that Jesus and Buddha and Ramana talked about. What you do with that, how you apply that self-knowledge to help the world in practical ways is up to you. So will you go back to business as usual? Or do you see a different destiny for yourself and for humanity?